Hi, I'm Ashley Admison, and it seems like today's topic is more uh, related to sex stuff because I guess sex is on my mind. <laughs> so today I wanted to talk about kind of like um, sexuality as it relates to my transition. I think this is a really important topic because as much as we want to say that being trans or your gender has nothing to do with your sexuality or that they are separate, they clearly are connected. And um, that level of connection is dependent on sort of like your level and depth of sexuality. If you have an interest in sex, there's going to be that kind of a shift with your related to your transition. Now, I think there's many kinds of different dimensions that you can measure that this shift can happen. This shift can happen in terms of um, your preference for who you date. Um, it can also be your uh, interest in kink or non-kink stuff. It can be your way you like to be touched. It can be what arouses you. Um, it can be what else? Uh, it can be the way that you reach climax, how you can get to that orgasm. All of these things, they kind of shift with your transition. And it's a huge, I mean, it, it's a big thing, right? It's a big part of your life. There's a lot of energy around sex. There's a lot of um, experience around sex. And there's a lot of communication and um, connection that has to be managed uh, when you're doing sex, right? Like, how do you go about communicating to your partner what your needs are when your needs are changing if you're with someone while you're transitioning or when you're transitioning how do you discover those parts of yourself that um, you may have previously ignored that need the attention that you weren't giving them um, once you acknowledge who you are and saying this is who i am what else comes with that what else um in your in this package of your being, your consciousness, the depth of your soul, uh, what is out? What else is down there? And I don't mean down there. I mean you know, <laughs> down in the depths of your own being. Uh, and uh, for me, my sexuality shift, I have heard, is actually something that a lot of other trans women can relate to. Now, I wouldn't say all trans women. I feel like there's several different buckets of trans women. Um, the buckets that I've observed are there's the asexual trans women where being trans and transitioning has nothing to do with sexuality and there's absolutely no sexuality or just a very low amount of sexual expression and interest after transition. Um, and then um, you kind of have the people in the middle who are more vanilla, like they like sex and they want to transition and, and they they've always liked women and when they transition, they still like women. Um, and then there's the folks that change sexual, sexual preference for partners, which is like me. I move from preferencing women to preferencing men. And then there's also the more, I think, sex kink related folks who's also me, where there's a deep level of sexuality tied in with your transition. And I talk about this in one of my earlier vi videos about sexuality and how my sexuality helped me embrace more of my female self through exploration of gender role playing within the bedroom where I was pretending to be more of a boy and that was actually helping me process deeper parts of my boyness that hadn't been completely processed or completed and were kind of like stuck in stasis because I moved through my transition so fast um, and that I had repressed those parts of me because I wanted to just delete and erase them, but they hadn't been fully processed. So by uh, embracing pretending to be a boy being a girl that helped me actually access parts of myself that needed to actually finish the transition and go through with it by activating um the re reality of perceiving myself like channeling that inner boyness and then transitioning that into a woman that's kind of like a complicated deeper narrative and i dive into that a lot more but i should just mention that like there is a lot of 
things that you can do in the bedroom that can be therapy. Like sex is healing with the right partner, with someone that you trust and that you can find that deeper connection with. It's a very, very powerful experience. And I have found it to be kind of like a hack. Like the way that you can shortcut some personal development is by exploring it in the bedroom. I don't know. What have you found um, with sex in the bedroom? Oh, it's getting dark. Let's see if I can adjust this. Oh, um, like what have you found in the bedroom? I don't like that. What what have what has worked for you, and how has your experience of yourself changed as you've explored things with your sexuality? So uh, I want to talk a little bit more about the things that I have been ashamed of in my sexuality, and I think these are important to call out because I think there's um, other um, women who may have not admitted that they're trans or may be ashamed. So I started with, um, like, have you been ashamed about your transition? I started as, um, as a crossdresser. Like, what else could I say? Like, I would, I would wear women's clothing and find it arousing. Um, I remember when I was 12 or 13, I put on, um, some girl's underwear and I was, I had these strange feelings that it, it turned me on and I didn't understand it, but I liked it. And uh, I think there was a lot of shame attached there that didn't really get processed until much later. It wasn't until I was 21 or 22 or 23 even, maybe even 25, that I started to wear women's clothing in the bedroom as a way of feeling sexy and enjoying that experience, that rush of femininity, and also the rush of doing something that I shouldn't be, right? Um, I, I'm on Fat Life, and I see people on Fat Life who are cross-dressers, and they just get aroused by wearing women's clothing, and, and in their day, they're just straight men. And I think, like, that is fine. That's, that's a fine point to stop at and just be. But I, I don't really think that's really the end. Um, I think that a lot of, cro this is just the theory. I can totally be wrong. But my theory is from my own personal experience that cross-dressers, most of them would actually prefer to be a woman. There's just a part of their subconscious that's not willing to admit it or not willing to accept it or it's just too much of an inconvenience to go down that route. And so they're stuck in this sexuality experience of that like feminization. And um, the sexual part of your being, like, like, what do you think about that? Like, is that a controversial opinion? Do you agree? Do you not agree? Have you been a cross-dresser before? Have you identified as a cross-dresser? Where are you now? Like, are, are you, have you discovered your transness? Um, sexuality is um, a, a, a back door, so to speak, of your consciousness. That's how I see it. And it gives you this desire to seek out certain stories and experiences that resonate deeply with something of who you are. There's something deeper to who you are that it's really trying to cultivate and work with. It's a very mysterious experience, but um, there's this, I guess, like this myth that this that your sexual being wants to engage, and by engaging in it, it becomes the catalyst for creating who you are. And uh, for me, cross-dressing was really just my sexuality trying to get me to pay attention to the fact that femininity within me was what I wanted and what I desired. But the only way that I was willing to engage with it to start with was through sexual arousal and sexual experience because that was something that porn had actually enabled me to see as something engaging and sexually uh, interesting and enjoyable. But it wasn't until... I found more things like like sissy related stuff and um, where it's like talking about, you know, you being a boy and then you kind of like becoming a girl and that's kind of like your purpose and your thing that you're meant to do. It wasn't until I started engaging with that that I started to recognize, hang on a second, it's turning me on to think of me being a girl, then why don't I just be a girl? <laughs> and why don't I just explore that? 
And so I, you know, I spent two years, two, two and a half years exploring that saying, am I, I, I must not be cis, but what am I? Um, is this really just a kink? Is this really just a fetish or is there something more to this? And I think the something more to this is for most people who are into this kind of thing. I think that's ultimately where the road leads. I don't think it, it's just an isolated sexual experience. People can compartmentize themselves in ways where they can isolate it and perceive it to be compartmentized as just a sexual experience. But if you're willing, and what do you think about that? Please let me know, because if there's controversial opinion around that, which I think there is, I'd love to hear it. Um, if you are willing to dive down and really audit yourself, really go into who you are and finding out what you want out of life and who, like what you're willing to admit, because admitting that you're trans is a huge admission. And it you know, like, do you remember the friction around that? If you're, you're, you've admitted that the amount of baggage related to admitting that you're trans is just huge because now you have to deal with your perception of body. You have to deal with your perception in the world and how you engage with it and how you express yourself and how, you know, how you identify and how you dress and, you know, just everything. It's a huge thing to admit. And so it's a lot easier to engage with it in, in a touristy way where you just say, well, it's just for sex and it's fun and I can compartmentize because I don't want to put energy towards admitting anything else. I just, I can't deal with it. I'm happy with my male body, whatever. I was happy with my male body. I'm actually unhappier with my female body. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, that's why I also seek surgery, but um, I am happier in my body than I was before. And I'm happier as a person. I'm more true to who I am. And I've had way better experiences as a, as a woman in the past two or three years than I I've ever had as a man. And I think that a large part of that is embracing who you are and, and right. Like, doesn't that make sense? Just being who you want to be and not being afraid of that. And I think that that's sort of like the crux of the issue that some of us may face with our sexuality is sexuality can come out in ways that can feel judged. Like you can feel afraid of being judged and you can feel afraid of admitting that to some people. It's something that we culturally shame, but I think the more you move into embracing your identity, um, if you're trans, it's like you've opened the door already. What, like to, to admit that you're a woman, who cares that you like to do bondage or that you like to um, do like, I don't know, there's a million different things, right? Admitting that seems like such a small detail when you're talking about admitting that you're a woman or that you're a man, right? And that's, the personal journey that I, I wish for everyone to kind of go down to really make sure they know who they are and that they ask the important questions. Being trans ultimately isn't about being trans. It's about being a person. Would you agree? It's about being a person that knows yourself so well that you can express and be who you want to be authentically. And that brings a lot of healing to the world because Imagine a world where everyone was stopping to pretend being who they thought they were or who they should be and would really just do what they wanted to do and be who they wanted to be. It's a lot easier said than done, but I believe it's possible. I do it and I do it every day. And I think a lot of you also do that, right? Who in your life is trapped? Who in your life is not being who they want to be and not being honest with that? Is there... Oh, some way that you can help them if you've already found your path. Um, I think we all have a duty as human beings on this planet to help others find themselves. And that's why I do this. And that's why I'm talking to you now, because I want you to find yourself and I want you to be able to do that for other people. Even just by being yourself, you enable others to be themselves. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you for joining me today and I'll see you in another episode soon. Bye.